In this video, we'll be learning on how to import from Akitsu to Unreal Engine 4. Here we have our Ellie's character included in Akitsu as a test 3D model with all her animations. First, we are going to review the export options as presented in Akitsu. You'll see that you can uh, check uh, this setting uh, in export preferences if you have multiple routes under a character node. But in this instance, this won't be necessary. You can leave ASC II format checked if you want the file readable in a uh, text format. You can ask not to bake the animations to keep the initial number of keyframes you were working uh, with in your scene project. Here you would go from 22 keys um, as uh, listed in the timeline to 136 keys, which definitely has a cost. Uh, I usually leave everything checked here, so I'm sure I preserve what I was working with in the Kitsu and I have no absolutely no surprise at import. Now let's review the different ways that we have to export uh, our working file. First, you can choose to export uh, the whole scene, which is pretty straightforward. Um, and you have the options to um, export only the selected animations uh, with the scene. So by default, when you export the whole scene, um, Akitsu will bake all your animations in a single FBX uh, file. But uh, if uh, you have some selected uh, in the um, AnimBank uh, list, and you choose the second options, then uh, these, the FBX that will be exported will only include the ones uh, that are selected. Um, then you have export selection, which lets you export a given object type, uh, be a mesh, a skeleton, half the skeleton, or part of the skeleton without its other components. And finally, you can do the same while restraining the number of animations you want to export uh, with uh, that uh, object. These uh, last two options are especially useful if you have a lot of uh, mesh templates that you are using when animating your character. For example, let's say you are using a, a cylinder instead of um, a saber, a spear, or any other weapon um, that you wouldn't want, of course, to uh, import into the game engine, then you can choose to leave them aside uh, when exporting from uh, Ekitsu. Here we're dealing with something, uh, we'll do something pretty simple and we'll choose to export the whole scene for uh, Elise. All animations uh, will be compiled and embedded uh, in a single FBX, as mentioned before. Now switching to Unreal Engine, I have created a file uh, for my character. When importing uh, a character file in the folder where other skeletons are located, Unreal Engine will by default load an existing skeleton and associate it uh, with uh, the mesh that you are trying to import. This would make sense, of course, if the skeleton belonged to that specific uh, character and would be um, viable for, um, for this mesh. For instance, if we had imported a new version of Elise uh, with, say, a 3D model where we have uh, worked further on the face or uh, decided to remove dreadlocks or maybe modify uh, some body parts, um, that, that would be an ideal solution. Here, uh, we don't want to use uh, one of the skeleton in library uh, because they don't really match our uh, Elias character. So we click on the skeleton icon and choose to hit uh, clear. I'll let you some time uh, to review the import options uh, selected, knowing that this is for a 3D model we want to use with uh, specific normal vertices, baked normal maps, and PBR uh, textures. Here we are leaving morphers, um, which is another word for blend shapes, uh, unchecked, 
as Elis doesn't have any, but of course, uh, if we would, for example, uh, do that presentation with our Sky Surfer uh, test uh, model, things would be different. Now switching to the animation uh, settings, I left everything checked by default. Here, this will let me obtain exactly what I had uh, when working in a Kitsu. Just one uh, thing that's worth uh, mentioning, by default, Unreal won't be creating a physics asset that will be used for ragdoll or close uh, simulation. You can yourself choose to determine joints that will be used for such calculations. Here, we simply advise to keep the envelope relatively simple to avoid uh, performance issues uh, further down the road. Once done, you can choose to import all uh, when dealing with multiple assets in the same way. When importing characters that will require uh, different import settings, you'll have to do this on a case-by-case -case basis. Here, it doesn't matter much uh, which one I'm choosing because I'm only dealing with uh, a, a single character. UE4 will proceed uh, by importing all tracks for all joints keyed at the desired frame rate. Note that you can quickly check which joints are keyed in a Kitsu by selecting a layer and look at what's displayed in the picker. Make sure when selecting the layer that the hammer is active next to his name and you'll be able to find that in the mixer panel. When the hammer is active, it means that you can add or remove joints and controllers uh, assigned to that layer by clicking the hammer next to their names in the picker. The number of joints and the selected frame rate determine how many keyframes are baked for each second. The higher the frame rate, the heavier the file. You can choose to work at 144 uh, frames uh, per second, which is extremely convenient and fluid when working in the Kitsu, but ultimately exporting at this frame rate uh, can result in long calculations and possibly performance uh, issue at the end. There is ultimately no need to overload the CPU like that, you can also choose to work at a comfortable frame rate, export it that way, and when uh, going through the import settings uh, in Unreal, define a new frame rate of say 30 frames per second in the animation setting tab that we reviewed earlier. Now let's review what we have uh, in Unreal Engine 4. Once files are imported, you can see that the mesh is outlined in a purple uh, color. Animations are um, in green and the skeleton is labeled with a blue bar. When opening the mesh, I can go and map material here. I can directly go and review the skeleton linked to it at the top right uh, corner of the um, Unreal window and uh, review animations also. Skeleton can be used in the retarget manager to uh, set it up with the uh, UE4 uh, humanoid rig. Uh, so here what you'll need to do is basically to map your skeletons with uh, the UE4 uh, humanoid joints that are found uh, here. You can click Show Advanced to display a uh, more, uh, more detailed list that would include fingers, uh, eye keys, and uh, twist uh, joints to have uh, a finer uh, retargeting. That said, this is only limited to humanoid character, whereas retargeting in a Kitsu that will be coming with um, version 2020.2 uh, would go further by allowing you to retarget any similarly structured uh, skeletons. So for example, that means that quick, uh, soon enough, you'll be able to uh, retarget your uh, quadruped animation onto um, any quadruped mesh as long as uh, you know, it is um, similar in structure. 
Here you can match uh, the Lee Skelton with uh, the UE4 uh, humanoid rig by browsing through all the lists. When retargeting from another model, its animations will be reinterpreted and added to the list of animation for the Lee Skelton here. Here in the animation tab, I can now see what I currently have imported for uh, Elise. So you'll see that I have my idle animation, my jump animation, my walk animation, and so on and so forth as um, listed in the Akitsu uh, earlier. Now, if I want to alter the movement of my walk, I can quickly go back to Akitsu and edit what's not uh, to my liking. For demonstration purposes, I will here exaggerate the forward-backward displacement uh, for the pelvis. Obviously, in a real production, you usually want to do that to refine animation uh, templates that you've built uh, for prototype purposes. This will, of course, require a lot more adjustments that, uh, than what I'm doing here. So. In this instance, after editing your animation, you'll only want to export uh, the FBX with the selected uh, animation. Here, I'm overriding my file because Unreal has sourced and stored its own assets for my project. The FBX acts as an archive and won't be reopened by Unreal unless you specifically ask for an update. Go in the top bar and hit reimport animation. You can see that the movement has been updated. The benefit here is that we will not be forced to export all animations or reimport everything at once. The issue you may be faced with when dealing with an, an FBX that carries a great number of animations is that Unreal Engine will need to parse your file to look for what's of interest. It's a bit like looking for the missing piece in a bucket full of Lego pieces, rather than having the missing piece nicely placed next to the bucket. It's a lot faster and simpler to export just what you need in the FBX so that you can re-import it into Unreal Engine. If you were to try and get uh, the run here, it would let you know that it cannot be found anymore. So you need to be sure you know what you are doing when uh, updating uh, an animation so that you don't ask for something that's not currently in the newly exported uh, FBX file. Ultimately, this technique definitely saves a lot of time when iterating and lets you keep only one FBX file. Now let's see how we can add a new animation to something that's already been imported uh, in Unreal. In the event uh, you have created a new animation for Elise that was not planned before, uh, here is how to proceed. So now let's call this new animation idle, idle underscore uh, test and do something silly. Here again, I'm creating something just for the purpose of demonstration. You can then export scene with the new animation selected. If you switch back to Unreal and right click your content browser and choose import asset as usual, you will realize that even after doing that, if you open existing animation, you'll see that nothing has been added here. Unreal Engine will see that ELEs already exists and will block the import, so to speak. In such case, you can create a new file and import the animation without skeleton. And here we are faced with another issue and I'm stumbling on each of them uh, on purpose so that I can give you the answers as we go through it. Here, when I'm importing a single animation, Unreal considers that 
this is an animation asset and it does not label it the way we would like it to. So to have the correct uh, naming, I'll have to export a couple of animations together. I can then drag and drop and move this animation over to the right folder. Here you don't want to copy, you want to move the animation to the right folder there and then delete the rest. You can then choose to assign a new skeleton for the animation that was moved. This should work, uh, this should work correctly and add the animation to the list. Ideally, you want to create all entries first to avoid this type of time-consuming hacks and you can potentially add more than what's needed and delete them afterwards. But at least you've got this method to work around it if faced with the problem. Uh, an important thing to mention is the reason why I imported from the same file location than the initial asset. Uh, this will enable me to re-import uh, some tweaked animation from Akitsu in case of future uh, edits. It's better to keep a single repository for the file, not to be confused uh, later on and mix things up. Now let's say a few words on how you can export uh, back from Unreal. When reviewing your animation, you can go in Asset and Export to FBX and then you can choose either to export just animation data or preview meshes. You'll have to choose which FBX um, format um, version you want to use. Unreal can store some physical data in there uh, if you created a ragdoll for your uh, character or and assigned a physics asset to it. Potentially not all constraints will be preserved in the FBX file, but you can potentially uh, get the collision boxes assigned to the right joints for free. Here, of course, we'll keep it simple. And uh, now we are going to uh, check what we get when we open back uh, the file in Akitsu. You'll notice that the frame rate was downscaled to 30 frames per second uh, here. And in terms of the mesh, it's almost exactly the same that we initially exported from Akitsu with you know, some skinning approximations here and there. Now let's play the animation and you can see that uh, pretty much everything was preserved uh, in, in the process. That's it for uh, this tutorial. I'm sure that you are now more um, able to uh, navigate through uh, Akitsu uh, exporting options and transfer your assets over to Unreal Engine and back. Have a good day and thank you for watching.